Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. In this video, we will be discussing the frequency distribution table. Without further ado, let's get this lesson started. Frequency distribution table, or what we will refer to as FDT, is actually a way of presenting the data using different classes with uniform intervals. Of course, this grouping will be based on the frequency of each data. For example, we are given with this data set. Below are the ages of the tourists going to a certain tourist spot on a certain barangay for these dates. So first thing that we have to do is to determine the range. Range is defined by the difference between the highest and the lowest value in the data set. In this case, the highest value is 75, the lowest is 14, so meaning our range is 61. Step 2, we have to determine the number of classes. Again, in FDT, we are grouping the data using different classes. So that's why we have to determine how many classes should we use. To do that, we will use this formula, 1 plus 3.322 log n. So n here stands for the number of data in your set. In this case, since we have 30 observations, therefore 30 is the value for n. Computing for this value, we have 5.91. However, we are dealing with number of classes, the number of rows in our frequency distribution table. So meaning we cannot draw 5.91 rows. Instead, we have to round it off to six classes or six rows. To interpret this later, we have to draw a table with classes in it. However, the classes should be six. And finally, to determine the class interval. Take note from our definition a while ago that frequency distribution table uses classes with uniform interval. It means that if a certain class has an interval of five, then the remaining class should have the same interval. With this being said, we have to divide the range, the answer in our step 1, by the number of classes, which is the answer to our step 2. Just substitute the value. We have 61 for R and the number of classes is 6. Dividing them, we have 10.17. Again, we cannot use a decimal number for class interval. However, in class interval, we have to follow this rule that if a certain number exceeds an integer, it is automatically rounded to the next integer. It means we will defy the rules in rounding off, meaning this 10.17 will automatically be considered 11. Again, we will defy the rules in rounding off. If a certain number exceeds its own integer, then it is rounded off to the next integer. So out of these computation, the important thing that we have to carry over to the next slide are these items, the number of classes and the class interval. For step four, we will be dealing with the FDT itself. Take note that the number of classes is six and the class interval is 11. So classes, usually the classes starts with the smallest observation, which is 14. So we will start here with 14. In order to identify the next part or the next starting point for the next class, we will use the class interval, which is 11. We will add 11 to 14. 14 plus 11 is 25. So we will write 25. For the next class, we will add again 11 to the previous starting point. 25 plus 11, we have 36. Doing the same, we have 47. Again, add 11, we have 58. And for this class, we have 69. These numbers that we wrote on the left side of the classes are what we will refer to as the lower limit. So let's accomplish this column as well. The lower limit are these numbers as well. We have 14, 25, 36, 47, 58, and 69. For this part, we will just be identifying the integer before 25, which is 24. 
the integer before 36, which is 35. Before 47, which is 46. So if you may notice, from 24, we also add 11 to get 35. 35 plus 11 is also 46. So this is basically the reason why we wrote this here so that we will be reminded that the class interval is always 11. 46 plus 11, we have 57. Again, it matches. After 57, we have 58. Next, we have 68. And finally, 68 plus 11, we have 79. These numbers on the right side of the classes are what we will refer to as the upper limits. So we will write them here too. This is 24, 35, 46, 57, 68, and 79. Next part is the tally. We will look for the classes where these values in our data will fall. So first, we start with 14. Obviously, it falls on the first class. Next, we have 17. 17 is also on the first class. 21, we have two observations, and both of them fall on the first class as well. So we have 1, 2. 22, that also belongs to the first class. Next, we have 25. However, that belongs already to the second class. 26 here as well, as well as 28. We also have here 31 and 32. And finally, we have two observations for 35. Next, we have 36. 36 is the starting number for the third class. 39 is also for the third class. 41 here as well. And finally, we have this 244. Next, we have 46. Oh, it's still here. Okay. Next, we have 47. We will now go to the fourth class. 48. 52. Mm -hmm. 53. 54. 55. Then we have 60. However, 60 is already here. 62 here as well. And of course, 63 is here. And finally, we have 75. Next to accomplish is frequency. For frequency, we will just be counting the tally for each class. So we have here 5, and then we have 7, here is 8, 6, 3, and 1. Next, we have to identify the sum. We have to add all of this. We have 5 plus 7 plus 8, plus 6 plus 3 plus 1, that is 30. And this sum should match the number of data that we have in the set. So in this case, we have 30 as the sum and 30 as the number of data or number of observations in our set. Next, we have the lower boundary and upper boundary. Lower boundary and upper boundary are actually quite similar to limit. However, for lower boundary and upper boundary, we are allowing decimals as values because lower boundaries ensure that when we graph this data set in the form of histogram, no gaps between the columns will be made. What I mean is the upper boundary of the first class should match the lower boundary of the second class. The upper boundary of the second class should match the lower boundary of the third class and so on. To do that, we will first look at our upper limit which is 24. 
And then, the lower limit of the second class, which is 25. What we're going to do is we will get their average. 24 plus 25 is 49 divided by 2, that is 24.5. Meaning this 24.5 will be the upper boundary of the first class and the lower boundary of the second class. Same applies with 35 and 36. We will get their average and we will be arriving with a value of 35.5. This is also 35.5. Next, we have 46 and 47. Getting their average, we have 46.5. And this is also 46.5. Doing the same process, we will be arriving with 57.5. Oh, by the way, you may also notice that their difference is also 11. So we can just add 11 here. This will be 68.5. And notice that 68.5 is also the average of 68 and 69. Now, going back here, you may see that this is blank because we don't have an upper boundary prior to this class. So what we're going to do here is we'll just subtract 11 from 24.5, giving us 13.5. So meaning this is 13.5. As for this part, we don't have a lower boundary for the next class because this is the last class. So meaning we will just be adding 11 to 68.5 in order for us to arrive with 79.5. Next part is class mark. Class mark is also known as the midpoint of the class. So what we're going to do to get the midpoint is we will add the lower and the upper limit and then divide it by 2. Or just get the average of both the upper and the lower limits. So doing that, we have 14 plus 24 divided by 2. Thus, we will have 38 divided by 2 or simply 19, meaning this is 19. Next, we have 25 and 35. Add them, then divide them by 2. We have 30. Another way of solving the class mark is to add 11 from the previous class mark of the preceding class. Meaning, you may notice here, 19 plus 11 is also 30. Adding 11, this is 41, this is 52, this is 63, and this is 74. These are all correct because the classes have uniform interval, which is 11. And finally, the cumulative frequency. Cumulative frequency from the word itself are just frequencies added or subtracted from its previous or next class. So for this less than cumulative frequency, it means that we are counting how many frequency is less than the upper limit. In that case, we have 5. Next, for the less than frequency of the next class, how many data are less than the upper limit, which is 35? So meaning we will just add 5 and the frequency of the next class. Then that will be our less than CF for the second row. Next, 12 plus 8, we have 20. Then 20 plus 6, we have 26, 26 plus 3, we have 29, and 29 plus 1, the answer is 30. The last entry for the less than cumulative frequency should match the sum of the frequency. Next, for the greater than cumulative frequency, it counts how many data set or what is the frequency Given the condition that the data should be greater 
than the lower limit of that class. Meaning, for this class, how many data are greater than 14? Obviously, all of them are greater than 14. So for the first entry, we have 30. Next, how many data are greater than 25? To do that, to have a shortcut for the greater than cumulative frequency, we start with 30 and then we subtract the frequency from that same class to get the next greater than CF. So 30 minus 5 here, we get 25. 25 minus the frequency of the same class, 7. 25 minus 7 is 18. 18 minus the frequency of that class, which is 8, will get 10. 10 minus the frequency of that class, 6, we have 4. 4 minus 3, we have 1. And the last item for the greater than cumulative frequency column should match the frequency of that row. If you're going to present your FDT to a certain audience, it is advisable to remove this part. Remove the part of the tally because it is actually done on a separate sheet of paper and is not included in the presentation itself. So that's it for the frequency distribution table. Thank you for watching and see you on the next video.